So, and it's not to say we didn't spend wisely, honestly. Right. Like, the no. spend that we made, it was very calculated. Yeah, 100%. But, you know, certain things are just kind of outside of your control. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes you you swing and you try and get on first base. And you and miss. And maybe a bird is just flying and hits the ball. You know, that's kind of what it felt like. Or you trip over yourself, <laughs> going to, running down first. Or your shoelaces come untied. <laughs> yeah. That's what it felt like. So, what ended up coming undone? <laughs> so, uh, multiple things yeah. came undone. Well, let's let's start with the first one. E-commerce is the greatest business opportunity of our generation. What's up, people? Welcome back to the Ecom Unlimited podcast. Thank you very much for your listens and your feedback. It's very excited to finally get this podcast out there, give you guys some value, be able to interact with you more, and just you know share stories about being in, in e-commerce. So, Josh, how are you doing today? Hey, man, doing good. But you know, it wasn't fantastic this q4 man it was a disaster tell us how you know we lost at least a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue mm. in q4 yeah we i don't know if we lost quite that much worth of revenue but so let, let's back up right so this this year we have been focusing on growing our wholesale side of the business right yeah and that's no secret. We talk about it online. We still do some online arbitrage, but our main growth focus has been wholesale. And leading up into Q4, our main goal was let's hammer wholesale spend, found suppliers during ASD in August of 2023, also found suppliers over the summer. So at that point, we had access to a lot of product to buy. Yeah. And so it was like, all right, it's now or never. Let's just send it. Let's send and it. And our goal was to hit a 200,000 plus yeah, month. revenue month, uh, which we did not hit. No. Though overall, the revenue numbers still look good. What yeah. did we? I think we 150. Do? Yeah, close to that. Yeah. I think total Q4 revenue was around 360,000. Oh. Yeah. Which we wanted to hit like 400 plus. So we were still yeah. close. We we're getting there. Right. But, but December could have just been so much better. It could have been so good. And it was underwhelming it was so underwhelming. very underwhelming yeah yeah total revenue was 120,000 about yeah which still sounds okay it just hurts when you see other people it just shots. It, it hurts just hurt. when you know it could have been double that yeah or yeah. more or more if we really would have spent wisely yeah so and it's not to say we didn't spend wisely honestly. Right. like the no. spend that we made it was very calculated yeah 100 percent. but you know certain things are just kind of outside of your control exactly yeah sometimes you you swing and you try and get on first base and you and miss. maybe a bird is just flying and hits the ball. You know, that's kind of what it felt like. Or you trip over yourself going <laughs> running down first. Or your shoelaces come untied. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it felt like. So what ended up coming undone? <laughs> so uh, multiple things yeah. came undone. Well, let's, let's start with the first one. So we had a product that we spent a good amount of money on, mid five figures. It was our biggest PO to date. Yeah. And... We, we did try to time the market a little bit. This product's been around for a long time. I'll say the category. It was, uh, um, it was an electronic product. Yes. Um, home, home, small home appliance. It was an air fryer. And we, I won't say the exact numbers because then you smart people will be able to find the keep a graph. But it's been around for a long time and it's cyclical. So, you know, the price dips, price goes up based on the offer count and everything. And historically, it had never gone below a certain price, which was our break-even price. So we felt very safe about buying the product. Yeah. However, the product decided to go thirty dollars below <laughs> the five-year historical low. Yeah, that's brutal. And because we had put so much capital into the product, we couldn't afford to hold it long enough. Right. Full until the buy box came back to a good spot. Yeah. And the funny thing is, so right, we are recording this, what's today, the 8th or 9th of January? Yeah. As of three or four days ago, yeah. the product is now back at a like 40% ROI. Yeah, which is very what profitable. So profitable. And we have it a few left over. From our returns. From, uh, from returns, some that we were holding FBM as well. Solid. So we'll sell a handful of them yes. profitably, but <laughs> not nearly as many as we bought. But you know, that's sometimes the lessons that you have to learn. Absolutely. And did we take a, a fat L on that product? We did. Absolutely. Um, do I regret buying it? Not entirely. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Not at all. Yeah. It's got to be part of the lessons. You it's know? part of the lessons. Part of the lessons. They're hard the lessons. lessons, but, you know, they're just part of the lessons. Yep. So that that's one issue that happened. 
And again, that's something you can't predict the future on, right? We no. made a calculated buy. It's not like we just didn't think about it, but the market did something that was pretty unexpected and that happens and that's part of the game. On the flip side of that, at least for me, surviving that showed us that we have yeah. a actual solid business. Yeah. Like that was, I think, the first big loss we've taken. Yeah, that was our first really big L. I mean, and there were a couple other things that went wrong too that we can, you know, talk about. But yeah, yeah, that was that was definitely our first like big loss. But like, mm -hmm. what made it funny to the point where it was almost comical at the end? Like, what happened? Like, oh, you were telling me like a week or two ago, you got email. Well, yeah. So the funny thing about it is the as as soon as the buy box got back to the point where we wanted to sell it at, and it was very profitable my supplier also emailed me uh, who may or may not be listening to the podcast and they had some extra units on hand as well that his company was trying to liquidate. Yeah. So I don't know if they were selling it at a loss themselves, but right. he also offered me more of that product. I think 30 to $40 cheaper than we originally <laughs> bought it at. So if I was able to get more at that price, right. we would be selling them at 70% ROI oh right my now. Gosh. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's, it's just how the market works. We just bought it at the absolute worst time yeah. and thought we were buying it at a good time, but it wasn't a good time. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate too. Cause I remember we like, this is like our first big PO. It was, and it, it was, was our biggest, it was the most amount of money we've ever put on a single product. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was like, I remember telling my boss, you know, coworkers, friends, <laughs> and dude, I am just waiting for somebody to ask me like, so like, what about those air fryers? And I'd be like, don't really remember telling you that. Uh, <laughs> let's just move on. It yeah. just hurts too bad to talk about. But you know, that's it. Like I said, it's a lesson. And yeah. the, on the other side of that with wholesale, right? There's this concept. I actually heard it from Ty Lopez, the way he phrased it. You got to pay to play. Yeah. Right. And with suppliers, you don't want to just open an account that never buy anything. Right. And this is a supplier that we plan on working with for a very long time and who has very good deals. And so even just getting the foot in the door and showing that supplier that we're serious still has value, even though we might not have profited the way we wanted to on that particular product. hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, let's see what, what, what else went wrong? You, you, you want to talk about some of the other, well, issues, one of the other issues we dealt with Yeah. again, wholesale, right? Wholesale. Yeah. We're really taking a couple L's on wholesale, which backed up our cash flow. We had a tool order, I think that we purchased what November. Yeah, like all, October. October, yep. November, and still hasn't been delivered yet, right? Still waiting for it to be delivered. To yeah, only only are only partially delivered. Okay, only partially um, delivered. Yeah, there actually is, is more on the way. I don't think I told you that yet, but we did get another um, shipment update from them, which is good. Okay, but gotcha. Yeah, the, the whole supply chain was just kind of a little bit of a disaster in Q4 for these particular products. Yeah, that we were ordering. Yeah. And it was just yeah disaster. Yeah, so it was a product that we bought expecting to sell through during Q4. Yeah. And thankfully, the products are still good. Like, the buy boxes are good. We'll still make money. But, yeah. I mean. Just not during Q4. Yeah, it's just the we ended up spending that capital and then not having that capital for three months. Yeah, that we, hurts a lot. Yeah, where, you know, we're leveraging credit, leveraging debt to be able to scale quickly. Yeah. And with OA, you know, we're used to having our cash flow turnaround always be super quick about 30 days or less if we're yeah. doing fbm yeah so that adjustment going into wholesale and then having you know things happen outside of your control it's not 100%. always people are just trying to screw you over but sometimes the market or the supply chain just does things that you can't control and then you end up taking the brunt of it absolutely and that's exactly what we oh, are doing we took it <laughs> we're taking the brunt but we did you know i've i've i even remember hearing i don't know if it was a podcast or a youtube video or a presentation Actually, I think it might have been the Miami Seller Conference where Amazon Lit was talking about some L's that they took in the business early oh, on. Oh, yeah. And thinking about how, you know, those things might take out their business. Right. Yeah. But 100%. getting through those things is what, you know, taught them valuable lessons and also showed them, okay, it's if things go wrong, it's not as bad as we think. Like, we can actually survive this. Yeah. And that's kind of the point where we're at now. I think we've had a lot of growth over the last four years. We have. And obviously have dealt with issues. Yeah. Had small losses on products. But I think these this is like, all right, now we gotta put on our big boy pants. Yeah, we like, do. We're taking L's that are massive. Not just four hundred dollars on a OA flip. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's a, it it hits a little different. It hits a little different. But that's you gotta you gotta be willing to pay to play. And we are paying to play. Absolutely. 
All right, so now that the we've gone over our Q4 disaster, we might as well move on. But I mean, we still sold a lot of product, right? Well, we, yeah, we had we some OA and some wholesale products that we were selling at some very good margin. Oh yeah, I mean, so and that's Q4. We some of that kind of helped offset the other issues that we were dealing. Oh with. yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, which was nice. Yep. Yeah, but it would have been, it could have been an A plus Q4, and it, I feel right. like it ended up being like a C plus B minus. Yeah, I agree. I because of B-. things that were out of our control. C plus. Yeah, yeah I agree. There. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we talked about the disaster of our Q4, why don't we go into a wholesale tip if you're just starting out? So if you're just, and I was thinking about this last night, and I honestly was so excited to share this with everyone because I was just thinking about it last night. And I was like, ah, oh, why don't we do this more? And we, we kind of did do it, but we didn't do it at the level of what I kind of want to explain it at. And that is just finding the best of the best kind of online arbitragers using store stalking and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to like specific categories so like ours was like apparel Mm -hmm. right yeah and you're going to find like the 10 what you think is like the top 10 probably arbitragers of apparel online so the couple that i can think are they're like fit line supply whoa just giving out the storefront oh snap like merch to you oh my i think katie and spinach are the first are we sure we want to leave this in there why not? What if they're listening to the podcast? Well, then that's unfortunate for them. They'll reach out. Dang. But that's like those aggressive. are like the three that like we looked at a lot. However, if we would have saved their storefronts and looked at their store like every day, we might have been able to find more stuff. So what I was suggesting for... Oh, and this is... I think you said wholesale tip, but you meant online arbitrage tip. Yeah, online yeah, arbitrage. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Did I say wholesale? You did. You're good. You're good. Okay. But anyway... um. So yeah, do that for every category. So if you have like a grocery category, go into the grocery category, see what, see where your best arbitrages are and just save their storefront. And honestly, do yourself a favor and just look at them every day because they're going to be uploading new products. Products are going to be checked in daily. And you know how ASINs go. Sometimes like they, they'll get like 10 in and then they'll go like just super fast. And then by the time you check, all their products look the same. It doesn't look like they've added anything. And what you could do is really just like scrape their st- scrape their all their asins and then like put them in a spreadsheet mm-hmm. and then just scrape it every time so then scrape it again and then see which asins add, add up and which ones don't and just sort from there so be like oh they have three new asins today i can go check those out um because those might be the ones they just added that actually still might be good right so yeah. no that's key yeah especially when you're doing reverse storefront stocking once you find a good storefront and it also helps when you're sourcing too because then you're looking for a new product. You're like, okay, let's let's check this ace now. And then you see that storefront that you know is yeah. good. And you're like, oh, oh God. money. Straight money. Straight money. That means and then it, it it changes the the way you're thinking about it, at least for me. Cause yeah. before I saw the storefront, I was like, well, maybe I can buy this, maybe not. And right. then I see that storefront. Yeah. And I'm immediately like, I know I can buy this. I just have to figure it out. Exactly. And then you go find it. And like you get so used to their catalogs that like you'll like run across you'll like run across the the product online and it'll be a great deal. And you won't even sometimes even know it. But like the fact that you were on their kind of catalog so much, you'll recognize be like, Oh, I know like one of my top people were, you know, buying this product. Let's see what this website's looking at right now with right. this deal. Yep. And that can really help you out too. For sure. Um yeah, but that was just I was just thinking about that last night, and we should have done that a lot more. Probably would have helped out. It's a fire tip. It's a good it tip. Is. Okay, so when you're uh, when you're doing this storefront stalking, what tool are you yeah. using? So currently, I will use Seller Amp. Um, usually, at first, just to see what categories they're in and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll do quick searches just to see if the products that they're buying currently are good, and then usually, what I'll do after that is maybe go to uh, Keepa and just look at their catalog as like a whole and sometimes I can just basically like scroll and just put my cursor on the link and it'll pop the Keepa graph up real quick and if it and if the Keepa graph's like not moving a whole lot I kind of just like continue just to skip through a lot of those products where it just looks like it's just like a flat line yep, all the way yep. across because I know we're probably not going to be able to sell that or right. it's like a wholesaler or yep. so- something else is going to be an issue with it whether it's like an IP complaint or stuff like that. So that's how I usually go. Yeah. So quick tip on what Josh just said. He breezed over it. But you, there's a way in the settings of Keepa to have it so that when you hover over an ASIN link, the Keepa graph will pop up as a widget. And so it'll work 
whatever web page you're on if you have the Keepa extension installed. So make sure that you're doing that because it'll just expedite your sourcing because then you don't have to always click into the actual listing page. You can just get a quick glimpse of the Keepa graph with whatever product page you're looking at, which is super clutch. Yeah, super clutch. Yep. All right, so then that this is a good transition to dive into our software draft picks. We get four picks and we get, yeah, let's just do four picks. We won't do one steal. Oh, you wanted to do a steal? I was thinking oh, about doing I a steal. Do, oh, I didn't know we were going to do I want to do a steal now. All right, let's do we're a steal. We're doing a steal. We're All doing right, a steal. steal. All right, so who goes first? I feel like we need music playing in the background. That's well, okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get our video editor to play some music in the background. I was going to say. All right, why don't, why don't you go first? <laughs> What's your first pick? Okay, so my first pick, and this is hard because I'm going between two different things. But I have a business mind, and I think about running a business, so I have to go Google Sheets. Dude, that is so controversial. Google Sheets. Google Sheets. The only – well, I don't want to influence your next pick, but it, it would be for top pick for me is between Google Sheets and Keepa. Gotcha. Between Google Sheets and Keepa. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and yep. like what about Google Sheets you love so much? There's just so much you can do with it, yeah. right? And a lot of the other tools are doing things that you could – build into Google Sheets and it would just be way clunkier in Google Sheets, right? Like not nearly right. as efficient, um, but there's just a lot of things you can do with it. You mean in Excel compared to Google Sheets? No, like in like a profit calculator, for example, like you can build a formula into Google Sheets and it would work, but like then it wouldn't be popping up on the page like Selleramp is, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those kind of things. Saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, so my number one pick, I'm gonna go for the sourcing side of things, make my life as easy as possible. I'm going Keepa Product Finder. Can't argue with it, can't, can't argue guard. with it. Gotta be one of the top tools for OA, wholesale, arbitrage. Everything, yep. yeah. It, it has, a, Keepa has a corner on the market for that data. Like there oh. just aren't any other tools that give you all the data that keep it does because they so have their cheap. relationship with Amazon. So dirt cheap. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. All right. What do you got next? Okay. So now I'm next. Yeah. Next one's going to be seller amp. Um, that's just such a useful tool as a profit calculator. And as a Google sheets guy, one of my favorite features Yes, I know. is how it syncs with Google sheets. So I can be doing retail arbitrage. I can be at a trade show. I can have the mobile app up Yeah. and I can scan a product and then click the Google Sheets button and all of the relevant data to that product is immediately in my Google Sheets, which means I can go back and look at it later. You can look at it. Anyone on our team can look at it. Yeah. I can see the keep a graph in the widget. It works yeah. on Dude, the, mobile the app Amazon is... page. It works on the mobile app. It works on the source site page. 100%. The mobile yeah. app is totally underrated. Yeah, very underrated. Very dude. If we had, the, if we were using the mobile seller app app, and we were doing retail arbitrage, uh, it would make our life so much we easier. We were we were doing retail arbitrage, scanning with the Amazon seller app. I know that is craziness, and just inputting so many numbers. Oh, that is crazy. And not we saving did that. to spreadsheets. I would have to save it to the seller. I would have to save it to the Amazon app, and then go back. That was into dis- the app. To I can't believe we did that. Add it to the Google Sheet. Anyway, okay, moving on. Yours was seller app. So what am I two? Yeah. Yep. So this is your second pick. Second pick. <sighs> this is big. I think we're going to go inventory lab. Ooh. I don't want to be having to do that going straight through Amazon's website to create a shipment. That's especially for oh, OA. Gosh, it's just pain. So painful. So I'm taking inventory lab to speed up my shipment times for sure. To and speed up shipment organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And organization. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would have, uh, well, we'll see. Maybe I'll steal inventory. Lab. Oh, maybe. But, uh, Another nice thing is just keeping track of inventory data, right? Yeah, 100%. So it has features where you can go in and see the current value of your inventory on hand. So you oh, know, yeah. oh, I have 20 grand in inventory, I have 30, 50 grand, however, however much. So, so that's big. Really, and it also keeps track of profitability by supplier, profitability by SKU. Decent, yep. You can see your profit and loss statement for whatever period of time. Um, on an accrual basis, which is really cool. So yeah, inventory lab's great. Yeah, super cool. All right, moving on. Pick number three. Pick number three. Okay. At this point now, we've gotten the sourcing side down. We've gotten the organizational side down. Yeah. Now it's time for a repricer. Oh, time for a repricer. I was hoping you weren't going to say that. Yeah. So this this is tough because there are, there are a couple good repricers on the market. Now, if you're a beginner, you're you're not going to go want to go with the pick that I'm about to choose. But as an advanced seller, you got to go seller snap. <sighs> I want just, a seller snap. So you bad. have to. You have to go seller snap. It's the, so elite. It's elite. The the AI is very powerful. So good. 
There are other rules that it has as well, and it's so simple to use. Yeah. Right? You plug in the min, you plug in the max, and then it doesn't start a price war. It gets you a lot of the buy box, and, yeah, it, it does exactly what you need a repricer to do. They also have a great support team. Really? Yep. So when we signed up for them, I had someone email me. We hopped on a call for like half an hour. She showed me. With a real person? Yeah, with an actual, yeah, with an actual person. So they All have right. really great support. If you have any questions, you just email your rep. They'll help you out. That's yep. pretty quick. Yep. That's yeah, pretty cool great. and quick. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so I'm I'm make, s- I'm, I've got Google going. Sheets, Seller seller Amp, and then Seller Snap. Yes. And I'm going to go with my third. I'm going to stick with the rep pricing. I'm going to go be cool. Be cool. Baby. Cool as can be. Also another repricer, super easy, has a cool lot of AI features, all that all that good stuff. However, we sell, seller snaps just a little bit better, but I'm being biased. Yeah, we we use we've used both of these repricers by the way. We, we switched over to seller snap, I guess, in the fall of 2023. Yes. When but we, we really u- started wholesale, that's yeah. why we wanted to do it. Yep, but we yep. used Be Cool for a year and a half. I mean, it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, but definitely saw a little bit of a bump when we switched. Yeah, for sure. All right, number four. Where are you at? Oh boy. Um, wait. So how do how do steals work? Does can I steal now or do I steal after the four uh, rounds? Steal after. Steal, steal after. after. Yeah, yeah. Man, what I'm trying to think. What other tools? What other tools do I really need here? Um, I mean, the tool that I'm really missing is Inventory Lab. If we're being completely I honest, I know. So <laughs> isn't isn't there an alternative or no? Uh, there are. There's Seller Board, but I haven't used it, so I can't talk too much to it just because I haven't used it. But I know a lot of people who use it, and it's good. Um. Shoot, there was a tool I was thinking of, and I for, I'm forgetting. Um, Sorry, I believe in you. I know. Shoot, should I pick my number four before you pick your number four? Well, yeah, I guess if this is a draft and we're on the clock, my time's run out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ran out. It's my turn. All right, so my last one, and it's for those OA people who can't organize their products. It's mm. going to be Product Locker. Mm. Kind of an interesting uh, software tool. Yeah. Helps you basically understand where buy box is on certain products. Yep. So when the buy box comes back into uh, your normal sales range where you can make profit, it will notify you. And so it can put that product back on your radar. Mm. Yep. That you may have been missing. Good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Ooh. Does oh wait, we're doing software. Never mind. That that doesn't work. Um man, I don't know why I'm blanking so hard. So I'm blanking, but I'm just I'm going to use a tool that's not again so much Amazon specific, but more so just good for business. Yeah. Loom. Yeah. Loom video recording software. Yeah. For your I've VAs. been making so many Loom videos. I've actually even been using Loom videos uh, to communicate with one of our suppliers. Really? Yeah, because he'll send me a deal. All right. And he's just trying to learn the Amazon space more. Sure. So he like wants to understand what's going on with the Keeper graph and everything. Yeah. So I'll just make a two minute Loom video and explain to him, hey, this is why the product would work or wouldn't work or the pricing I need. Ah, yeah, so that's been fun. That's interesting. Yep, that's really cool. Yeah, so Loom, Loom is a great, a great tool as well. All right, so out of my four, which one would you steal? Inventory Lab. Inventory Lab. No yeah, question. I know. No Dude, question. It's just, it's just so powerful. Yeah, and I think a very underrated part of Inventory Lab again is the reporting features. Right, you can see the supplier profitability, the ASIN profitability. You can see it even gives you return data, right? So I've yeah. There have been oh. products where we've cut them out because I looked at the ASIN profitability and I was like, wow, I thought we were making money on that. And making we, like 50 bucks a month. We're not it's making like, oh. any money on that. It's like terrible. Yep. And then also seeing your overall breakdown. So you can see your sales, your returns, your cost of goods sold, your other expenses that you put in. Yeah. yeah. Love inventory lab. All right. If I were to have seal one of yours, it would have to be Google Sheets. <laughs> I know. I kind of crapped on it in the beginning, but man. Let me tell you the organizational power of honestly Google Drive. I would yeah, say Google, Google Drive. Drive. Yeah. Oh yep. gosh, it's just so good. Yep. Good to get your VAs communicated all in the same spreadsheet. Yep. For everything, share everything, make everything private, public, everything you want to. Yep. All for your business. It's yep. just so powerful. So powerful. Yep. For sure. 100%. All right. That was fun. I like that. Yeah, that was. That good. was a great idea. That the, was a great idea. The software draft. So just finished the software draft. If you're a beginner or if you haven't started on Amazon, those are all of the tools that you're going to need access to to be able to successfully launch your business on Amazon. So 2024 for us, we started in 2017. So this is our sixth or seventh full year going to be selling on Amazon. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, we are we're so excited for, for what we're looking. So excited. Looking at. It's 
as at even recovering from those losses that we've just taken, our our profitability will be higher this year. Our sales will be higher. Also going to start selling on Walmart, yes. working on some brand direct wholesale exclusive deals. Like just so, so excited for this year. That's coming from us as experienced sellers. Josh. Yes. Why is today, January 9th, is that what it is? <laughs> January 9th, 2024. Gosh, we're already Q1 like a 2024. Weekend. Why is now a great time for a new person to start selling on Amazon? Yeah. I mean, I think so. Obviously, you know, everyone's got like the Q4 hype. You know, that's gone. It was cool. If you didn't start your business in Q4, that's fine. You can still make money in January. Everybody, everybody is like plagued by January due to mostly returns for you apparel sellers. But um, I mean, you know, we have to realize just everything's being sold online nowadays and you know the pie is so big that even if you want to come in start doing a part-time really if you if your organization was good um you could be making money uh doing this um there's just so much opportunity with different products coming out i know like the stanley cups for target were a big hit this year and i know a lot of sellers who were scooping them up so it was just like you know there's never a right time to start a business because there's always something most likely going on in your life yeah there's never a perfect time yeah i mean there's never a perfect time but like this there's never an easy time well yeah that too easier yeah but um just starting just small steps doesn't have to be big steps just get maybe like seller ramp on your phone pay for it for two months go around scan some products get your feet wet a little bit i mean you're gonna lose what like 60 bucks but like, you know, you don't know what you're going to make on the other side of that. Like if you like it, if you have a knack for it, if you get in the right discord group too, um, and they get a product out there, I mean, you could usually be making that in, in a month. So, um, I would just say best time to start is now. Best time so, to start is now. Yeah. Yep. I, I just Googled what Amazon's annual revenue was and it's like half half a trillion <laughs> half a trillion dollars dude that's wild yeah 500 billion which is just insane so it's it's really hard especially when you're not in the space to think that big like that's a number yeah. i can barely comprehend well okay well let's just be honest. but you only need like you said the pie is big sure and you only need a small slice and i think it's it's the best capital multiplier it's the best cash multiplier yeah you can spend 10 bucks and then turn that 10 bucks into 13 bucks and then turn that 13 bucks into 17 and a half and just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's a business you can build. Like you need an Amazon account, which you can do free or paid. Yep. And then you need a tool like seller amp and Keepa, both of which are like 25, 30 bucks a month. Yeah. So then your overhead expenses to start are like 60, 70 bucks a month. And then whatever you want to spend on inventory. Yeah. I and know. then you're off to the races. That's you're it. off the races. Off yeah. The races. And what's also cool is like, you know, if you get bigger too, you can think about like, oh, the credit card rewards because you're spending so much money on inventory so that money. you can turn around. Like, you know, you could basically travel for probably free if you wanted to, if you did it right. Um, you know, you could be spending, if you spent like 100K a year on inventory, yep. you can take Which a couple is not trips. as much as you think. Yeah. Which isn't much as once the cycle starts, you know, you can just kind of keep it churning. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's just exciting. I mean, there's nothing about this business that, I mean, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. It's just awesome. A hundred percent. It's just fun. Yep. There's a ton of sellers on there that'll help you. Yep. There's the a ton of groups great. that are free. Exactly. Ton of groups that are even free. Yep. That are calling out stuff. Yep. Make a Twitter account, put your face on it. Don't be anonymous. Talk to people. Yeah. Hit us up. Send us a DM. We'll answer your questions. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, just I, ask a specific question. Don't say, hey, what are your tips? Yeah, don't, don't please do don't that. ask me that. Ask me actual questions once yeah. you're doing things. I even gave a guy a lead one time. Oh yeah? Yeah. Facts. In the DMs or did you post it? No, DMs. Okay, that's good. Come on. Yeah, don't don't oversaturate that the market. That was actually here, one of our good ones too. But don't 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 oversaturate the market here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I try not to. Yeah, if anyone's posting uh free leads on Twitter. Don't do them. No. Get it so that and then don't buy it. <laughs> get it? What does that mean? Like if someone's doing an auto DM or like oh, a like oh, oh, respond oh, oh. to me and I'll message you this lead. Yeah. Definitely do it and then don't buy it. Yeah, Unless if it, it has like a thousand sales a day. Yeah. Because then it's gonna tank. Or if you can just like ship them from your home before everybody else buys it, yeah. you'll random, be good. Random tip. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well that sounds uh good. Episode what, four lockdown here? 
I honestly don't know which episode number this one's going to be. Right. This is recording number four. Yeah, recording number four. So it will probably be episode four, I guess. All right. Yeah. Sweet. I love it. Until next time, guys, I'm Josh. This is Kaj. This is Ecom Unlimited. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.